Max, one thing that uh, I often hear people ask about chelated minerals is they're, they're interested in how they're made. And a question that comes up often is, you know, what, what is the base material that you start with? Do you start with a pure mineral and then go about forming the chelate? Or do you start with you know, some other form, like maybe a, you know, calcium carbonate or a chloride or something of that sort? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Uh, and uh, we get questions uh, on our website on this as well. Uh, the thing is, when you make a chelate, you want to use a starting material that will not leave any residue in the finished product. So what we start with, if we could get the pure metal, of course, we'd, we would use that. But the important thing is we use USP or FCC graded starting material and a, a form that will not leave residue. So we use things like magnesium oxide, calcium hydroxide, calcium carbonate as starting material because those types, for instance, the mag oxide from the uh, uh, salt outside of the mineral is left. in the finished chelate because of that fact. Like if we use something, for instance, like magnesium chloride as a starting material, well, the chloride would be present in the finished product and, and that wouldn't be good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so oftentimes people uh, think that, oh, well, just because it's a chelate doesn't mean that it's that much better because if you start with calcium carbonate, you still have calcium carbonate, you still have the carbonate, and no, you don't. You don't have that. And so, uh, rest assured, if you're taking an Albion chelate, you're getting the pure chelate with not any of the uh, leftovers from the other form. So if I understand what you're saying is you start with uh, uh, perhaps something, some combination, some, co uh, some mineral combination, but part of the whole process of chelating it is to remove that carbonate That's or correct. chloride or whatever, well, not chloride, we won't mention it, but oxide right. or right. whatever the form might be, so that then in fact you can... Right, absolutely, that's part of the whole process. The process. You know, the, uh, the thing is, there are a lot of uh, know-how in making chelates besides the patented parts. Uh, you have to control pH and temperature and flow rate of the uh, spray drying equipment, nozzle size, all types of things that can change the quality of the finished product. It can change color, in fact, by heating too much or whatever. But uh, there are a lot of controls that we put in place. And as you say, we use a starting material. The first thing that happens, hopefully, is once you put the starting mineral form into liquid, which is what we do in all cases, the part that's the non-metal, the carbonate, is removed from the mineral and then the, the amino acid is put in its place. I've been to your facility and I've seen the process of creating of the reaction that goes on to create the minerals and I think one of the things that impressed me is the steps that you go through where you're checking the quality to make sure that everything is happening as you expect it to happen and, and of course and then at the end of the, f the final validation that that you have in fact created a true chelate. Right, and, you know uh, the thing is in process controls are critical because they'll tell you that you are making a consistent product throughout the course of a production run of a chelate powder. Um, you know that Albion is uh, doing these things because we are certified uh, GMP and we are an ISO uh, 9000 uh, company so we definitely have all types of controls and we do uh, make sure that we do things according to good manufacturing practices. Thank you Max. Sure.